boom, there it is. There's the key. It actually kind of looks like the car. It has little headlights on it that light up when you unlock. And there's a lot of interesting stuff about the car. It's kind of weird like me. I know who goes and buys their first Porsche during the pandemic going on right now, but I did and I want to make a video to share some of the interesting design stuff with my friends. So Andrew and Herman, this is for you. My sister who doesn't even know I bought this car yet, I bought my first Porsche, so yay me. So the first thing is inside you actually have two sun visors for the passenger and the driver, which is super nice. I've driven this car over 100 miles already in the Los Angeles sun, and it's really nice. You get the front covered, and then also you can move the main one to the side, and they're both decent sizes, so that's really nice. I'm never going to drive this thing off-road, but it has the O handles for the front passenger and the driver so in the middle you have all the controls and then you'll see kind of the, the handles that hump over it on the side so you can hold on if you're off-roading which is convenient and i guess smart but i think that should have been an option i'm never going to touch those it also has air suspension this is normal height level see where it is to the backpack now i'm going to lift it up and you'll see that gap increase And this is the special all-terrain height. See how much more clearance we have? And we have a giant gap here, and we have enough room to lay down under the car from these side seats. If Ludacris were to ever ask, but how low can you go? This is how low it can go. and that way it's easier to load up the trunk with cargo which is really nice the air suspension is an option in the back when you lift up the passenger seat you can see that there's a set of hoses that it comes with and then in front of the shotgun seat up front there is an air compressor outlet so you can actually pump the car's tires or a ball if you go play volleyball or basketball at the beach or whatever you can pump it using the car's air compressor and because of that the spare tire in the trunk doesn't come inflated because they expect you to inflate it using the car's air suspension. There's also two buttons on the back of the steering wheel, which is really dumb because they're kind of useless, but you hit the button and then at nighttime, it turns off or turns on the backlight illumination of those buttons. So your volume button can light up just like the keyboard on your MacBook, which is interesting. And they put a button on each side. So if you're driving with one hand, you can turn those lights on and off. When you put the key in, the steering lock gives a really nice loud thunk. So it just feels like quality and there's no sport driving mode you can do manual shifting but there is a sport suspension control so it can change the dampening thanks to the air suspension and it actually does feel different so you'll feel more bumps and this thing feels solid the boost gauge is not in psi it is in bar so it's in the metric conversion so i'll put the conversion right here i think that's pretty interesting I don't know how much PSI it runs, but it feels good. It's got 450 horsepower, 457 pound feet of torque. So I'm excited about it. Thanks to the four and a half liter V8 up front and the airflow buttons to change which vent the air comes from for the AC is hidden under a sliding porch branded cover in the center stack. I don't think they really need to put this there, but it's nice. It reminds you that you're driving a Porsche, which is cool. And the most gimmicky thing is the seat belts can move up and down. I honestly don't understand the purpose of this at all. If someone watching can explain in the comments, that'd be great. But you hit a button on the side of the seats and then the actual seat belt mechanism up top above your shoulder moves up or moves down, I guess to make the seat belt more comfortable and fit you perfectly. I've never seen this in any other car be automated. I know some cars you can manually move it, but that's pretty cool. The glove box has air conditioning, just like my GTI. You can put something like a shake or a chocolate bar in it and it won't melt when you have the AC on, which is nice. And the man button on the steering wheel is not for manual shifting. It's to manually change the radio controls. So if you hit man, you can manually seek radio stations or you hit man again, and then it will do auto radio scanning, whether you press the up or down arrow. I think it's kind of dumb, but to go into manual mode, it's easy. You just hit the controller on the left or right side of the steering wheel to go up a gear or down a gear. Or if you want to do it with the actual gear selector in the middle, you can just move it from one side to the other and then go up for going up a gear, down for going down a gear, which is nice. The rear trunk cover has a vertical cargo net in it, so you can hide everything in your trunk or just be able to access that area by opening the glass portion of the trunk lid. Or you can also put up a cargo net so that you can fully hold off the trunk, which I guess is kind of cool. If you have something big that you're moving, you don't want it to hit into the rear seats at all. And there's no Porsche logo on the back. So on the hood, you get the Porsche logo. On the back, you only get the Cayenne Turbo emblem. There are parking sensors, but no backup camera. So when you go to the back, it beeps. And 
when you go to the front, it has this interesting monitor system on the top of the dashboard. So if you have something coming up on your front left, it will light up green, yellow, red on the left side of that. If it's in front of the car in the middle, it'll light up the whole thing. And there's a little spoiler above the rear windshield. It makes it look a little bit more sporty. And the trunk has this metal protective strip so that when you're loading stuff, again, in that loading mode, you have the rear bumper protected so you don't scratch the paint, which is nice. And since this is the turbo model, I get the quad exhaust, the regular V8, and I believe the V6 get the dual exhaust, and the car sounds pretty good. So that is the walkthrough of my new Porsche Cayenne Turbo, all the little quirks and things I've found with it. I've only owned it for less than a week now, so I'm sure I will find more. If there's something I missed and you own one, please leave a comment down below. But honestly, I just wanted to make this video for my friends, Andrew and Herman, to show them some cool stuff with the car. I don't know the next time I will be able to see them in person and actually show them, but I do have some more videos coming out with it uh, and one explaining why I bought it, which I've had to explain to them both. Anyways, hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up, subscribe for more, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching, and I'm definitely excited about this. Peace.